This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at simple tricks and pithy tips in Apple Final Cut Pro 10. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to use Activity Monitor. Another thing I've been writing about recently is the whole idea of bandwidth, how fast our systems are and whether our systems are fast enough for video editing. There's a really useful utility that's bundled with your operating system called Activity Monitor. Activity Monitor measures CPU performance, RAM activity, storage activity, network activity, energy usage, but not GPU activity. I want to show you how this works. Go to the Utility folder, Shift-Command-U opens up the Utility folder, and Activity Monitor is right at the top. Double-click Activity Monitor, and now we see these five tabs across the top. CPU measures CPU usage. Memory is memory usage, etc., etc. When we get to CPU, all this stuff in the middle are all the background processes that are currently running on my system, and there are dozens of them. That's what Unix uses to be able to function. It runs lots and lots of programs in the background. Now, you could, if you want, try and figure out what all these things do. For instance, I'm using ScreenFlow right now to record my screen so I can post that up into the store. But most of the time, I just say, whoa, that's a lot of cool stuff. I mean, it goes forever. Just there's, And you can see that some of them don't take any CPU cycles at all. But mostly, I click on the tab and I ignore the middle because what we care about is right down here. System is the, um, is the percentage of total CPU time that is used by the operating system. User is the total amount of CPU time that's used by applications that I have started. This is the operating system and background, and this is applications I've started. Now, currently, I'm running Final Cut, though it's hidden. I'm running ScreenFlow. I'm running Keynote, and I'm running the Finder. And I'm still taking only 4% of my clock cycles which means that 90% of my CPUs are sitting by the side of the pool, sipping margaritas, wondering when they're going to get to work. Memory. When you click on memory, the number we care about is right here, memory used. I've got a 32 gig system, but of that 32 gigs, I'm only using 8 gigs. Applications are using 6, wired memory, which is, who knows, uh, part of it. And so I've got 8 gigs that are being used, and cache files is the amount of RAM which is being used to pretend that it's a hard disk. Because RAM is so much faster than a hard disk, we'll load files that I use regularly into cached memory. As long as the swap is zero, then you're using your memory efficiently. What swap means is you don't have enough RAM, and so it's spooling portions of RAM back to your hard disk, which is just going to slow down performance. So this shows how much is being used by everything you have running, this is just sort of emulating a hard disk to speed performance up. If you've got a fusion drive, you're not really going to notice it. And swap is the only one that we really care about because that's RAM that's being laid off to the hard disk. So this gives you a chance to say, how's my system doing? And what I've found for both Premiere and Final Cut when we're doing HD editing, this is going to hover between 6 and 8 gig. It's never going to come close to using the full 32, or even 16 for that matter. Energy is how energy efficient your stuff is. I've never cared. I plug it into the wall. I don't care. So I'm going to just skip over. This disk is one that I use constantly, and you see this in my articles. Again, we're ignoring the middle. The two numbers we care about are these two. Data read per second is playback from the disk into our software. Data written is record. This is exporting files out of our software to the hard disk. If you're getting dropped frames, it's going to be because the codec that you've chosen or the frame size or the frame rate that you've chosen requires a data transfer from the hard disk to your software, data read per second, faster than your storage will support. And this is a really useful feature. This is playback. Record is not so important. Yes, I mean, faster record speeds will make our exports slightly faster. But read speeds are what causes drop frames, are what causes stuttering, what causes all the anguish that we go with in video editing. So this is the number that you've got to watch. And as long as your read speeds are 70 megabytes per second or more, you're going to be fine for HD. And you're probably going to need about four or 500 megabytes a second. That's rough. For optimized files with 4K. 4K is just going to require faster bandwidth. And this is the magic number for that. 
Network is also useful. This shows the amount of data that you are sending from your computer out your Ethernet port. Now, this could be going to a server, could be going to the Internet. For instance, I'm streaming this out to you so you can watch it on GoToWebinar, and I'm streaming it at a rate of 20K a second, which is not very fast. All right, 70. It varies. You can see how it varies here. This is mapping it over time. This is an instant-by-instant instant readout, the same way that this is mapping our hard disk. Blue is playback, red is record. Over time, while well, we get the instant-by-instant instant readout over here, Activity Monitor is my best friend. I use this constantly to see how busy are my CPUs, how full is RAM memory, how fast are my hard disks, where are my problems. It's free, it's available as part of the operating system, and it's inside the Utilities folder, which is Shift-Command-U, Shift-Command-U, and right at the top. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar, taking a look at simple tricks and pithy tips inside Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this webinar, please visit our store at larryjordan.com store and look for Webinar 214. By the way, membership is a great value when you need to stretch your training dollars. A subscription membership to our video training library saves you money because you can access all of our online videos for a low monthly price of only nineteen ninety nine. That's more than sixteen hundred movies, hundreds of hours, all in depth and all up to date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week and for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.